Fatari from San Mateo, California. Coming in as a freshman, I feel like every athlete that comes to Sarah, especially football, you know, they ask, like, what, what kind of legacy do I want to leave when I come here? Put off them, put off your brothers, all right? Let's go. I want to be one of the best to ever come through here, leaving a great legacy on and off the field. I think Luke is a... Um He's very fundamentally sound, meaning uh, his, his stroke is clean. I think he's learning how to use his hips a little more. Um, he's a very quiet, confident kid. I first met Luke in seventh grade. We were put on the same team here uh, on a next level flag football team, and uh, we won the championship that year. So I just knew Luke was going to be special. He's got moxie. He's got confidence. He's got like an, an internal swagger. There were many times where he made us right. He's just His game is really uh, top notch. Even though Luke was a uh only a junior this year. Uh, we all trusted in him and he did a phenomenal job this season. He's very humble. He doesn't brag about a lot of things, but internally there's this, there's like this fire inside of Luke that I think it's a lot of people like to follow. I had a lot of faith in Luke. I just look forward to see what he's going to do next year. And all these colleges out there, like there's one here uh, in San Mateo and he's ready. Freshman year I was playing like we kind of kind of knew we were going to be good, but we didn't know if we were going to live up to the class before us because they went eight and one, I think. And then like the first few weeks, we were looking pretty solid on defense and we just had to put it together on offense. I remember I was playing with all my buddies and nine weeks later, we were nine and no. So now like we call ourselves the only undefeated team in Sarah history going nine and no. You guys got love for one another. I don't care about that scoreboard, I never have. <laughs> Coach Walsh is like my second dad, to be honest. He's one of the, the greatest people I've ever met. You know, I could go to him for anything, whether it's about football or anything else. So I'm so grateful that, you know, we've created a relationship the past four years. My sophomore year was one of the biggest learning experiences ever because I started like as the third string quarterback on a depth chart and you know coach Walsh has actually sat me down and asked me if I want to go back down and play JV the week before the first game of the year and I was like no I want to stay up I want to learn you know because I'm going to learn a lot whether I'm playing or not in practice behind Leckie and Jack and then week one the second string quarterback goes down so week two you know I'm in the game the second half as a second string quarterback and week three I'm starting my first varsity high school football game as a sophomore learned a lot you know, after watching film and even just playing against people two years older than you, and I was only a sophomore, that was definitely one of the biggest learning experiences for me, so. What's up guys, Kyle Morton here alongside Luke Batari, sophomore hey! How did it feel to lead the team out uh, after Isaiah got injured? I mean, when Isaiah went out, I knew uh, Coach, Coach Ortiz came up and told me that we were going to put 10 at quarterback and put 6 at running back. Like, yeah, uh, running back. So I knew I had to step up. I mean, I got the jitters out in the last drive, and then I know it was all from there. I mean, I just trusted my O-line. I had good timing on receivers. So. I mean, I knew I was only going to get a few opportunities my sophomore year, and I was always ready for those moments. I didn't tap out because it wasn't – wasn't getting what I wanted, you know, I was always prepared mentally. You know, Coach Lowe came up to me Thursday before the Pittsburgh game, he's like, you're starting tomorrow. And I was like, I mean, I was, I was scared, yeah, but I was like, you know what, I prepare for this. My past 14 years of life, I prepare for this moment and I know I'm gonna be ready. Ready, begin. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I was very confident going into the season just based on a number of, of factors, number of kids returning, number of leaders returning, particularly on the offensive and defensive lines. I felt like we had some talent. Knowing that if you have the lines, if we have the lines going into a season, we're going to be okay. We also had our quarterback that had a lot of experience. You know, there were three quarterbacks battling it out in the, in the summertime, and Luke ended up winning the job, and that experience that he had from his sophomore year, I think really helped him in his junior year. That year was one of the best years of my life, you know, not only because we just won state, but like 
that was the best group of guys that I've ever been around. You know, I still talk to every single one of them. Isaiah, Neo, Nick Brown, like Shane, Patrick, that was like the best team that I've ever been on. But yeah, looking back, it's still like, dang, we really did that? We really won state? We really like went against all odds? We lost Neo and we still won state? So yeah, like every day you can look back and be like, we really did that. And you know, it's, it's an accomplishment that all of us hold true to our hearts with all the adversity that we've been through. And you know, losing state the year before and then coming back that year and winning state against the team, the top scoring team in the nation and we hold them to 13 points. So I think that's, that season alone just speaks to what Sarah's all about. Winning state, that was, that was one of the best feelings in my life for sure. Everything that we worked for, and everything, that, all the work that we put in, it was all worth it. Sarah's all about teaching you how to bounce back from adversity. I think, you know, I've been through a lot of adversity in my life. That's why I started Play for Prevention. But, you know, adversity is one thing that you have to learn to overcome in your life because you're going to face it, you know, one time or another. You're going to face it multiple times. So I think... You know, all the adversity that I faced, you know, before coming into Sarah and then like on the football field, not starting uh, at first and then coming in eventually. It's all about, you know, staying true to yourself and what your goal is because you have to put yourself in the right situations. You never want to take the wrong step to put yourself in the wrong situation. So putting yourself in the right situation to reach your ultimate goal is what it's all about and bouncing back from adversity. On behalf of the United States Marine Corps, I'm very excited to honor Luke Guitar of the selection to the 2018 Certified Dallas All-American. Everyone at Sarah is connected with the Brady somehow, it's just a matter of how close. Tom Brady Sr., he saw my work with Play for Prevention in the past fall. And I think me going to Sarah and being the quarterback was appealing for him when he emailed me. And I uh, it opened my computer, opened my email, and there was an email from Tom Brady. Tom Brady Sr. and you know I thought that was the coolest thing ever like I'm pretty sure the whole physics class knew that I had an email from Tom Brady in my inbox because <laughs> I was like ecstatic about it like holy cow Tom Brady just emailed me but you know after I read the email and what he nominated me for which was the Semper Fidelis Marines Academy uh, in DC that was something special and ever since then me and him have created like this really this cool little relationship you know you know, he's always got his eye on me, you know, on my accomplishments. You know, we don't talk that often, but it's kind of this cool little relationship that we've created. The mentor that I brought with me was another football coach, Victor James. You know, he was, he's been a big mentor for me. He's always been, you know, loyal to the soil. He's always been there for me to back me up, help me with advice. So that was special for us to go on that trip together. But, you know, just the experiences that we had, about, they talk a lot about your true fighting spirit, fighting back from adversity. You know, me was creating play for prevention. I was told about this opportunity maybe a couple weeks ago, and uh, t totally unexpected, but um, I didn't realize over the years, you know, the relationship we were building, it's, it's, it's great to know that uh, alongside helping someone on the field that my impact off the field, which is going to last much longer, is, is, uh, is effective. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's not enough words. That academy was really cool to see, you know, a hundred kids story from all over the nation coming from different backgrounds, whether they were from California, Alabama, Maine, Washington. So that was pretty cool to see in itself. This year was really about the relationships. Cutting it off right before you go to college, this is your last like really tight six months of football together before you guys all go off to college and do your own thing. Capped off a great four year career with, you know, the people with, I wouldn't have wanted to do with any anyone else. EJ, Keelan, Vince, Malachi, Ricky, like all those guys in my senior class that were there my freshman year. Thank you all for coming to the homecoming game tonight. I'm honored to have St. Ignatius, Notre Dame, and Mercy stand here with me to take this moment to recognize the startling and devastating trend of youth struggling with depression, suicide, and other mental health challenges. 
My name is Luke Batari, and you all. So many people I could thank. Uh, I want to thank Coach Vic. You know, you were the one that went on the Washington D.C. trip with me as a mentor. You know, I remember playing for you seven on seven freshman year, and then now speed training for college, and all the advice that you given me, and all the training you done for me. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, Coach Lowe, I mean, I don't even <laughs> know where to start. <laughs> like, the four year ride that we had, seventh grade to, or five year ride that we had, seventh grade to, you know, junior year, that was the best five years of my life. You know, all the, the highs and the lows of winning state, and so happy that you got that job. Shout out all the boys that I played football with and that I'll continue to play football with. Thank you guys, you know. Those are lifelong lasting relationships. Thank you, Mrs. Ellers, for you know everything that you've done for me the past two years with all this media coming in and supporting me in every decision that I make. My little brother, Dante, I mean, I know he's always been living in my footsteps, but I just want to say, you know, whatever, wherever life takes you, you know, follow it. It doesn't always have to be what I did, but, you know, always stay true to yourself and, you know, I love you. Uh, I want to thank Kevin with my stepdad. Thank you for coming into my life and helping me in a moment where I needed it the most and being the father figure now for me. Thank you, Sione, for, you already know what it is, my, my older brother, my quarterback coach, Coach Walsh. They're like a second father to me. Thank you for everything that you've done for me in football, off the field, with play for prevention. My mom, number one, for sure. I mean, I, she's, She's hard on me. She's been hard on me all my life with the stuff we've been through and always like teaching me the right way to do things and teaching me lessons. But I think because of her, she's put like so countless people on my life, specifically like three mentors in my life. And, you know, I didn't realize what she was doing at the time, you know, back in seventh grade when I was talking to this random 30 year old dude training quarterbacks. I didn't know what that would mean. I didn't know what that meant at that time. Little did I know five years later that person would be like my older brother or Coach Walsh, which she put me in touch with, would be like my second dad. I didn't realize the positions that she was putting me in at the time, but now, you know, I'm so thankful for the, that she put me in those situations to meet those mentors and that those mentors have bought into me and I bought into them and we've created, you know, a lifelong relationship. <laughs> sweater you know walk-on club I saw it I saw Baker Mayfield wearing it because he's a walk-on you know it's kind of like that doubt me but I'll prove you wrong sweatshirt and that's kind of what I stand for you know a lot of doubt on me to the, my past four years but I always want to overcome that you know it doesn't really matter what other people say about you it's what you think about yourself because you know how are other people gonna believe you when you don't believe in yourself so if you stand for something if you have confidence People are always going to follow you. You can't let other people determine what your path is going to be. You can't let other people determine what your goal is going to be. Only you can define what you want to do. And you know, that's what I think that sets me apart is, you know, being a natural leader because I'm not a cocky guy, but I'm super confident in my goals. I'm super confident in, what I'm, in myself and I'm super confident for what I stand for. I always want to be the person that people can lean on, whether it's off the field or on the field, you know. I want to be in that moment where there's tons of pressure because I've prepared for that all my life. And I want to be that guy that people come to in the game and I want the ball in my hands, whatever situation it is. But it's in those moments of weakness where you can find your strength. Make them wonder how you handled the game of life. You are responsible for how you play. So play for prevention. Don't let life play you. Join the conversation. You have no idea how powerful your words might be to someone. If you can make a small difference in someone's life, that's the best one you can get. Thank you all. My definition of mental toughness is not letting other people dictate who you are, being true to your why, and never letting anyone else dictate that. You always have to stay true to your path.